If you've ever looked up a gun because of Call of Duty, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. Comment section is out of control. Uh, I don't know what I've done. I don't know what my hands have wrought, but get down in there and find out what is so important. If you guys are looking to support the channel, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Limited. Big Daddy Limited is like the Costco of the gun world. 99 cents for the first month after that price goes up. Is it worth it? Well, if you spend money, yes. If not, it's not going to be worth it. You're going to be wasting your money. We have Vertex and LAX ammunition for gloves, bags, and gear. And of course, for your ammunition needs, we have LAX ammo. Ladies, gentlemen, and my often forgotten, but not by me, K31's Rifles, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic. We're going to be talking about the SIG M18, otherwise known as the 320. This pistol was recently adopted by the U.S. Marine Corps, the U.S. Navy, and the U.S. Air Force. U.S. Coast Guard also adopted it, but who cares? Um, the Army previously had adopted the M17, which is the full-size brother to the M18. But kind of hard to see from over there, but as you can see... The M18 is a fair bit shorter. So in this video, we're going to be talking about why they might have done that. But specifically, we're going to be reviewing this bad boy because it is the future sidearm of a large component of the United States military. Now, before we get into that full disclosure, as I always do, what is my relationship um, with the companies that I'm that I that I'm going to be displaying today? Their various products, right? So, starting off with, we have Sig. So with SIG, I receive products and I do reviews for them. There's no exchange of money or anything like that. All ammunition is provided for by me and my lovely Patreon people out there. So pretty standard for review. Usually um, ammunition is also provided, but in that case, I'm just doing that. But um, that's how it's set up for my reviews. Uh, no funny business going on there. I'm not a pay for play type of guy, just full disclosure. Um, some of the other products out there, Surefire. Um, pistol lights were purchased by me, although I do have a relationship with Sur Surefire. Um, Beretta, which I will be showing at some point in the video, uh, no relationship with them, but I do have a relationship with Lang and Tactical. And finally, with Glock, who couldn't give a shit less about me. Okay, let's get into the video. So what is the M18? Well, the M18 is a short recoil operated 9mm semi-automatic weapon, magazine fed, and it's been fairly well proven as the P320, which is what it was before it was adopted by the military as the M18. Now. We're going to do what we usually do. We're going to go tip to butt. We're going to compare it to both the M9, the 1911, and a variety of other handguns out there because this is going to be the standard military sidearm for quite a while. The military is kind of slow to change sidearms. In fact, uh, I believe it's been 30, almost 30 years that the M9 has been in service. So we can expect this to be in service for likely another 30 years or so. So I do have a Surefire X300 Ultra attached to this pistol. Love to run Pistol lights, also want to experiment a little bit. Some of the different holster options out there, such as this one from Safari Land, which is one of their seven series that fits the uh, M18 with a X300 light, as well, it also fits the M17. But let's get into it. So we're gonna start tip to butt, like we always do. Start with the barrel. The barrel is a 3.9 inch barrel. Um, SIG obviously knows what they're doing. They've made a lot of really good combat handguns in the past. Specifically, we have the 226, to just name one. That's uh, pretty obvious. So when it comes to the M18, a lot of people have said that this is an exceptionally accurate handgun. I haven't seen that to be the case personally. So I've shot a lot of different types of ammunition through it, anything from Winchester White Box, to some of our nicer spear loadings that are made for duty use. And in all of those, I've seen about higher end of two, inches at about 25 yards, which is good, which is on par with like Glock 17, um, a little bit worse than like a nice Beretta, and it's perfectly acceptable. I don't find the M17 or the M18 to be exceptionally accurate weapons. I find them to be combat accurate, duty accurate weapons, much like the Glock is. And that's not putting anything against the M18, but rather is setting expectations um, for the type of accuracy you can expect out of the M18. Now, like I always say, in most cases, the pistol is likely to be more accurate than you are, and that is absolutely the case with the M18. I don't know a lot of people that can actually shoot uh, a two-inch group at 25 yards on their own. It's a little bit more difficult than you'd think. So this is a, this is a handgun that is plenty accurate for the purpose for which it was designed.
on the M18s is a PVD Coyote. Same thing that the M17 had. Now, the problem that I've had with the M18 and the M17 with their finishes is I've noticed that they scratch very easily, and specifically that they are wearing very quickly. And I saw that with the M17 as well, where it scratched quite easily, but I attribute it to the hard use that I put the pistol through. However, after talking to a couple army armorers who have a lot of time on the M17 and a couple other end users with the M18, I've come to the conclusion that mine isn't a isn't an outlier, that the finish on the M18 and M17 does wear off fairly quickly. Um, it's both a combination of the Coyote showing the wear more easily than some of the other colors that they could possibly put on there, and also it not being as hard being as hard as uh, some of the other pistols out there like the uh, Glock Gen 5s which also had some finish issue issues and the M9s out there. So with your M18s, M17s, do realize that they are going to scratch a little bit easier. They're going to show that wear. Is it that big of a deal? Um, I wondered about it. Specifically, I was worried about corrosion resistance uh, being out here in the uh, wet, wet Pacific Northwest. Despite that, I haven't seen any rust or anything like that appearing on the slide despite all the wear but it is something to keep an eye on with everything going on. Now, on the bottom of the M18, just like on the bottom of the M17, we have a Picatinny reel for the mounting of any variety of accessories, so you can LARP. So in this case, I've got the Surefire X300. You can mount anything on there. Moving from the finish, we have our front sight. So with the sights, I kind of wanted to take a moment to talk about them. I know it sounds like I'm really uh, shitting on the M18 right now, but these are kind of the majority of my issues that I have with the M18, specifically the sights. The front sight is fine. It's tritium comes to you with tritium sights already on it. That's a huge upgrade over the standard M9. Awesome. Um, I have no issues with the front sight. Um, my issue comes with the rear sight. So there are cool things about the rear sight on the SIG M18. Specifically, the screws for mounting the optic actually come from the bottom and they secure the optic. Uh, a loophole Delta Point Pro as well as the SIG optic will fit on this no problem. So that is cool that it's just inherently already ready for that type of optics capability. The problem is on the rear sights, the screws that come from the underside screw into the rear sight. Because of that, the rear sights are unnecessarily wide. The problem being is that when I bring this weapon up to look at my target, I have a pretty large uh, portion of my sight picture that is blocked out by the width of those rear sights. So for me, it's kind of puzzling that that was a design choice because there are other P320 optic capable pistols out there that have a more traditional screw mounting system that allow for thinner rear sights, which in my mind is a better kind of idea. So that being said, I'm not an engineer at SIG, so there could be some very specific reason why those screws were placed on the underside of the slide as opposed to the top and why we have now this very fat uh, rear sight. But despite all that, it makes shooting the M18 a little bit more difficult compared to, say, your Beretta M9. I find the Beretta, and of course, this is a really nice Beretta from Langdon. This is a Beretta Elite. But despite that, the standard M9 sights are very thin and you still have a large sight picture to see what you need to. Now, I understand that that is a moot point as these weapons are eventually going to be equipped with optics. But until that point, I find that the iron sights are just really lackluster in my opinion. So at the front of the slide, we have front serrations and rear serrations. So any type of manipulation work that you need to do, it's perfect. It's very well machined. It's not too aggressive or you're ripping up in your hands and that type of stuff in wet weather, which is typically when I'm ending up using those and when I need that grip. So good on them for doing that. The slide overall is a pretty attractive look. I like the cuts to them. Um, it looks better than something like a standard Glock and I actually don't have just like a stock Glock around. Uh, this one is made, but is done by Jaeger Works. But despite that, the slide just looks more attractive. And I understand that, you know, looking attractive and looking cool isn't, you know, everything. But I do appreciate the attention to detail that they have done on the slide. Moving back from there, we have our ejection port. So the ejection port is both wide, flared. Um, I have had no issues with ejection. So let it be known that I did have a, a break-in period on the M18. And that's pretty standard on many pistols out there. Um, Glocks will choke for the first couple hundred rounds a lot of the time. Say, I see the same things from M18s and many other pistols. Just like all those, the M18 went through a break-in period. About 100, 200 rounds after that, it ran flawlessly. And, you know, during its break-in period, I had 
think maybe three stovepipes, and then after that, the thing just started running like a champ. So after that, I've done about another 2K on this, and I've had zero issues with it. So yeah, break in period for sure. But anyhow, the wide ejection port, awesome. Just what you want to see in a modern handgun. No issues there. What I really do like is that the loaded chamber indicator is a little bit more prominent than when you'd have in a Glock. So the loaded chamber indicator on the SIG uh, pops up quite a bit, enough so that even with a pretty thick glove on, you can still feel it when you run your hand over the top. So that kind of gets rid of the, the need to do press checks or anything like that because you know you already have a round loaded in the chamber. You don't have to fuck with your weapon and make sure it's good to go. Okay, moving to the bottom. Now, before we get to all the controls on the M18 and everything that's going on here, it's important to talk about the modularity of the M18 and M17. The trigger pack is fully removable. It's meant to be able to pop the frame off no problem and put a new frame on. That's pretty cool. There's actually some really cool frame options out there, specifically um, the X-Carry from SIG and also the Wilson Combat. And the cool thing is if you don't like the grip on the M18 or the M17 or these 320 guns, you can easily swap those out. So I think it's like about 250 or so for a new frame, but you can get some really good options. I love the X-Carry and I'm about to try out the Wilson Combat. I'll let you guys know what I think. But everything I've heard from end users out there say that the Wilson Combat frame is one of the best out there. In any case, going over the controls, I am a huge fan of the controls of the M18, much like I was of the M17. I think they did some really smart things here and I, I can understand why it was selected. Now that we've talked about that, let's get over to the takedown. So the takedown for me is annoying. I prefer the takedown on the Glock where you pull the trigger, pull it back a teeny bit, depress those uh, levers and you can just pull that slide right off. It's very fast, I can do it in like sub-second. Not that anybody's timing. But with the uh, M18, you gotta eject the mag, lock the slide back, then you rotate this takedown lever forward and then once you've done that, you can release it and you can pull the slide off. There's a lot more steps, but the big thing that they touted was the ability to not have to pull the trigger in order to disassemble the weapon. And given the fact that the Air Force and Navy don't shoot that much, we really don't want them shooting themselves in the face with this weapon having to pull the trigger. Marine Corps, I trust. You guys are good with guns, and that's about the only thing you guys are good with, to be clear. But in any case, so I understand why they tout it as a feature. But for me, it's particularly annoying, but again, safety is king when it comes to the military. So we have the takedown lever right there. And what's nice about the takedown lever, for me personally, is when I'm gripping the weapon, my thumb actually rests right on top. A couple people have stated that um, this tears up their thumbs. I would say maybe lift a little bit more, <laughs> get a little bit, get tougher hands. But in any case, um, for me, my thumb rests right on that takedown lever and uh, it just works fine for me. It kind of acts as like a, a way to help hold the weapon down as well. Now let's talk about some of the other controls. When we go back from the takedown lever, we hit, hit that nice slide stop, slide release. Again, if you argue about it being a slide stop, slide release, no one really gives a fuck. But in any case, I really, really like the placement of the slide release here. And the reason for that is it's very easy and intuitive to hit. And specifically, it's at such a position that a lot of people when doing a high thumbs forward modern grip on a handgun, they tend to depress that slide release so that when they're firing, the weapon won't go to slide block when it hits that last round. A lot of people have that problem with Glocks. It's one of the reasons why the why Cogworks came out with the extended slide stop where it uh, raises it up and out of the way of your high grip. SIG approached the issue in a different way. They moved it slightly rearward, that way your grip doesn't really impede it. And as well, they added a little raised lip right around it and it's actually quite small. And at first I thought it'd be not really good being so small, but I consider myself to have pretty average hands. And when I grip it, my thumb can get right to there as soon as I need to. So for me, doing a reload is just super simple and easy. It fall, falls right where I need it to. And when I don't want to depress that, I rest my thumb right on that safety, which brings us to the next point, which is a safety. And by the way, both the slide stop and the safety are ambidextrous, which is good, of course, for a military type environment. But the safety, the safety isn't obnoxiously large like you'd see on 1911s, but it is positioned very well. Why I like it so much is that when you have your 
SIG holstered and you go to draw it out like on an ALS system. And by the way, if you're not using a Safari Land system, you're pretty much wrong. But in any case, when you hit it with the Safari Land, you depress this lever right here, which unlocks the weapon. As you do that and get your grip, it naturally falls on that safety and depresses it. So I found that my draw stroke didn't really have to be changed at all compared to like a Glock because my thumb naturally disengages the safety as it is drawn from the holster. And I know that seems like a stretch, but I really do believe that SIG did their research when they were designing this and placing all of their different controls. So I can really appreciate the speed at which you can bring this weapon to bear despite having a manual safety. Now, as far as it having a manual safety, everyone's gonna argue about it. Fact of the matter is, Big Army wanted it. Everybody else followed suit with their handgun. So we have a manual safety now, NBD. We have our magazine release. Magazine release is perfect. Um, I don't find it as nice as like the Glock Gen 5s with the ramped magazine release, but despite that, it is perfectly serviceable. I have no issues with it. It's out of the way when you grip. Um, it is reversible, which is typical of many modern service pistols. Good job with that. Next, we come to the texturing. So here comes my problem with the grip on the uh, M18, M17. Specifically, that the texturing to get a good grip on this weapon is pretty low. It goes about right to where the magazine releases. The problem is, is that this entire area up here uh, is encompassed by my other hand as I close that area in for a modern grip. I wish they would have had some sort of, you know, texturing or something done there in order to make a, for a better grip overall because you just have a bunch of smoothness and that's not, it's not very conducive to firing quickly or with a modern grip. Now this can of course be solved by a variety of different methods. You have anywhere from the X-Carry frame to the Wilson Combat frame to stippling it uh, if you're able to in your particular unit. But it definitely leaves me wanting for more. I wish that they had just had more texturing overall. I think I feel like it's a pretty easy fix, and I feel like it's a definite oversight when it comes to the design of this handgun. Another quick note should be that if you have really small hands, that this has inlets for your trigger finger to get in there. So this grip is better if you have a smaller uh, hand, but if you're a meat eater and you're kind of a bigger dude, then the X-Carry and the Wilson Combat are certainly a better option for you. The magazines on the M18, just like the M17, are awesome. They're swappable between the two. They are either 17 or 21 rounders. The 21 rounders have a nice base pad at the bottom. Um, the magazines for the M18 and the M17 are based off the SIG 226, which is in a well-proven combat reliable handgun. So the magazines are absolutely reliable. The problem with the magazines comes to price. The magazines are pricey. Specifically, they come in at around $39, $40 for the 17 rounders and a bit more for the 21 rounders, which is really unfortunate. They are nice, but magazines, in my opinion, really should not cost that much. Hopefully, as the aftermarket begins to bloom for the M18, as it becomes the uh, standard you know, handgun for the military and all that, we'll have a lot more options out there. What's nice also is that we have this little lip right here. The Gen 5 Glock had about the same thing just at the front, but the problem with the Gen 5 Glock is you always catch your magazine on it. This one is pretty well done. I actually haven't caught the magazine on those little lips right there. And the reason for it is if the gun gets dirty, the mag gets jammed up, you can still get a better grip in there and get your fingers on that ledge of that magazine and rip that magazine out should you need to, given grit or what have you, that could seize that magazine up in there. All right, we've avoided it long enough. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go set trigger together. We're gonna go ahead and put on some Unchained Melody. Go ahead and put your finger right over mine. Listen to that music. Let's go ahead and feel that trigger. So first off, we got about a two millimeter take up. Hit our first wall. About three, four, five, six pounds. It's a pretty short trigger pull overall. Let's go ahead and let's feel that reset. Sticky, not great. Pretty mushy overall. Feel that trigger pull one more time from the reset. Feels good. About six pounds. According to my Lyman pull gauge, anywhere from 5.5 to 6.5 is pretty typical. Um, that's about what you'd expect from a military trigger. The trigger is nice. It's weird. So in, in certain aspects, it is better than a Glock trigger, which is another striker-fired weapon, which is what I'm going to compare it to. But despite that, it has a pretty terrible reset comparatively. So the trigger pull is shorter, but about the same poundage as a Glock 17. Despite that, that reset is not good, it's pretty sticky. So because of that, I still think that the Glock overall is a better trigger, 
but I can say, I will say that the trigger pull itself is definitely superior on the M18. There's no doubt about it. Now, is it on the level of like the Wather? No, not at all. Wather still takes the cake with the best striker fired trigger out there. But you know what? M18 is doing pretty good overall. All right, now that we've talked about that. Quick note on holsters. There are a lot of great holsters out there. We have the 7 series from Safariland. We also have another series that fits the weapon without a weapon light. You also have optics ready ones from Safari Land. Um, those, of course, will have the level three retention on them. It's usually not that necessary. Go ahead and remove that and just stick to the ALS system itself. But lots of good holster options for duty use out there for these particular handguns. So now that we've talked about all that, let's talk about what matters. What does it feel like to shoot this and how is it? Well. SIG has a uh, reputation for having weapons with high bore axis. And the 320 is better than other SIGs out there. And it is still better than the M9. So if you compare it to like the Beretta right here, still has a slightly lower bore axis than the Beretta, barely. It's like a smidge. Now compared to the Glock, the Glock still has a lower bore axis overall. What really bites the M18 and the M17 in the butt is the fact that the tang for the M18 and the M17 are so low. You have to grip the gun so low due to the placement of that tang, and that's due to the way the weapon is designed. Because of that, although it doesn't have that low of a bore axis, your hand sits fairly low on the weapon. Because of that, you have a little bit more felt recoil compared to uh, a weapon of the same caliber, such as a Glock 17, a Walther, um, or a Beretta. Now, despite that, due to excellent controls and a good trigger, it is fairly pleasurable to shoot. And again, with that dual spring recoil rod that they have in the M18, it actually dissipates the recoil quite a bit. So it does feel good to shoot, pretty comparable to a Glock 19, which is around the same size as the M18. And reliability. The weapon went through the MHS um, evaluation. There's no doubt that this is a very reliable pistol made to withstand the harshest of conditions. I don't have any doubt about that. The question in my mind is how is it going to fare uh, being in the hands of you know millions of different individuals over the course of a couple of years? Will it fare as well as the Berettas did? Will it fare as well as the 1911s did? And that's something that we're going to have to see as time goes on. I was worried originally about the plastics used in the polymer frame. Now, despite that, the polymer frame has held up extremely well. So what does it come down to? Well, the M18 is a good pistol. Is it getting, like the best out there? No, absolutely not. But there are requirements the military had that put it in the position that it's in. Despite all that, I think it's an excellent firearm. But you know what really matters with this is if you don't train, it's not going to matter if you have this or a Glock or a Beretta or what have you. So get out there and get training. Tons of great guys to get training from out there. You have Cogworks, Haley Strategic, Not My Dad, Bear Solutions, Esoteric, Pack McNamara, um, Direct Action Resource Center. Tons of guys. I can't always name all of them, but they all rock. Get out there, get that training, get good with what you have because that is what matters most. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. As is usual, I've got nothing else for you. For real, I got nothing else for you. Take care. Last thing for you guys. With the whole COVID business going on, I know a lot of you guys are really just spending a lot of time just inside on your phone, your computer, that type of stuff. Take a minute, unplug. It's important to get away from all this social media, from all this screen time, because you need time to just connect with people, to connect with nature. Get out there. I know we're kind of on lockdown, but try to enjoy life as much as you can and not through uh, electronics. Just get out there. You know, if you guys have gotten this far, you are my ultra fans. I want to thank you guys personally. If you guys want to help me out the most, Patreon is where it's at. My Patreon supporters uh, help me have helped me make this channel way better, to be frank with you guys. And I can't thank you guys enough. Productions are way better now because I can afford better equipment and all that type of stuff. And all that comes right back into making this a better channel. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves, and as is usual, I've got nothing else for you.